Have you ever wondered why organizations of all sizes are rapidly migrating to the cloud and what steps they are taking in order to maximize their chances of success? Hi, I'm Mike Coleman, a developer advocate here at Google Cloud, and I'm joined today by one of our engineering managers, Yoav Reich. In this video, we're going to talk about how organizations can get started with the cloud. We'll cover why organizations are moving to the cloud and some of the challenges associated with that move. Then we'll talk about common cloud adoption patterns. And finally, we'll look at how to accelerate your move to the cloud by migrating some of your existing applications. Let's start with the why. Yoav, what benefits are customers receiving from moving to Google Cloud today? There are a lot of benefits to moving to the cloud, but I wanted to specifically talk about three different ones. The first is around flexibility. With cloud, it's very easy for customers to experiment and find the right solution to their unique challenges. For instance, when you look at where you can run your workloads, you can run on VMs or containers. And for containers, you have the choice to running on a serverless platform like Cloud Run, fully managed Kubernetes with Google Kubernetes Engine in autopilot mode, or a more traditional Kubernetes cluster with GKE in standard mode. Next. There is the idea of cost saving, which manifests itself in a couple of different ways. First, you only pay for what you use. You don't need to invest in purchasing physical hardware that is only used intermittently. Which leads me to the second point around cost, or more specifically, opportunity cost. For instance, let's say you want to run a proof of concept for a new service you might want to offer. With physical hardware, it can be very risky to experiment because you have to make a large financial investment upfront in order to acquire the hardware. Whereas with the cloud, you can spin up a few instances, run your POC and spin them down when you're finished. There is much less financial risk in that second model. Plus, it takes a lot of time to get that stuff deployed, right? Exactly. You need to order the hardware. Make sure you have the data center space and then get it actually installed. It's a lot of money and a lot of waiting. And if the experiment doesn't pan off, that can be problematic. However, with cloud, as I mentioned, you can spin up resources in a matter of minutes and you only pay for what you use. So it's minimal risk and allows you to move much faster. Finally, let's talk about reliability. With the Google Cloud, we operate to a large extent as your site reliability engineers. We handle a lot of the management of the underlying infrastructure, as well as ensuring it's secured. In the case of serverless platforms, we do virtually all that work for you. And with other platform, we take care of a big chunk of it. The bottom line is that it's less work for you and less to worry about, allowing you to focus on your business issues. While there are significant benefits to moving to the cloud, there are also some key challenges that potential adopters should be aware of. One thing I've personally done a few times is underestimate the complexity at first glance. A move to the cloud involves many different teams and various deeply connected systems. And invariably, as you dig in, you're going to find things you initially missed. You're also going to have to deal with inertia. Change is scary for a lot of people, and that fear can sometimes manifest itself in people being resistant to new technologies and processes. Additionally, we can get caught up in the whole, if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality, where we see good enough as being the desired end state. Yoav, what other challenges have you seen? You mentioned the complexity of existing systems, but it's also important to recognize that people can be overwhelmed by the sheer number of choices when it comes to cloud-based software and services. Learning how to best leverage all of these choices will require operators to develop new skills, which, while potentially a challenge, it's also a benefit. It's rarely a bad thing to add new tools to your toolbox. The other big challenge we all need to be cognizant of is setting appropriate expectations. The journey to the cloud needs to be done in a measured manner. We need to pick early projects that maximize our chances for success, which means tempering expectations in some overnight miracle. Certainly, you can notch some early wins, but the full benefits of the cloud are realized over a big period of time. We've talked about the benefits and challenges of moving to the cloud. So I think it makes sense at this point to discuss what makes a good migration project. First and foremost, start with a business objective. 
Why are you moving to the cloud? Because as we discussed, it takes a degree of work and planning. From a technical perspective, it's important to step back and take a platform view. Don't get too focused of, on any one application or system, but rather how it all comes together. This means you should stay rooted in some key areas where you have good familiarity, but push the envelope where it makes sense. Don't try to boil the ocean. Totally agree on those points and would add that one size does not fit all. Use a mix of approaches. This is especially important when you think about how you start your cloud journey. What's the answer to the question, how do I get something actually running in the cloud? As we've said before, there is no one way that is correct, and we could do a video series just discussing the intricacies of different adoption patterns. For the sake of brevity, let's just focus on a few here. Maybe the easiest way to get a workload into the cloud is what is often called lift and shift. The idea of taking something running in your data center, likely in a VM, and moving that workload as is into the cloud. So for VMs, that's taking an application off a server running on-prem and putting it into a Google Compute Engine instance. In some cases, you can go a level deeper. For instance, if you're running a MySQL database in a VM, you might actually choose to move that to a managed service like Cloud SQL, rather than onto a generic VM with MySQL installed. The next pattern is kind of an extension of the first, which is where you selectively refactor an application. You might migrate a monolithic application into a GCE instance and then decide to start breaking it into distinct parts. You take the database and move it to Cloud SQL, then you break out a service. Maybe it's the payment processing service, and you run that in its own container. Then you break out the authentication service into its own container. Some stuff may stay in the VM and other stuff is running in containers, but all those services can still communicate. The final major bucket is where you actually decide it's better to simply rebuild your application from scratch in the cloud, leveraging cloud-native technologies and design patterns. While this approach may take a bit longer than the others, it often results in the ability to integrate new functionality as well as derive the most value from the cloud. So, if we look at a couple of things we just said, there are a couple of different areas of consideration for customers when they think of deploying their first workloads to Google Cloud. The first area is answering the question, what applications are best suited for me to move? In a lot of cases, migrating existing workloads is going to be easier than developing an application from scratch, whether that's a brand new application or a rewrite of an existing application. But even if it's easier to lift and shift an existing application, you should still need to figure out what application have the highest target for success. The second area is deciding how that application is going to run in Google Cloud. Are you just going to migrate them from an on-prem VM to a GCE instance? Do we want to containerize that application? If you containerize it, should you run it on Cloud Run or GKE? The answer to these questions are going to be a combination of what makes sense for your business and what is technically feasible. Fortunately, Google Cloud has some tooling that can help with assessing the technical feasibility of migrating existing VM-based workloads to Google Cloud. For starters, we have the Migration Fit Assessment Tool, or MFIT for short, Yoav. I think since your team actually builds MFIT, maybe you want to describe what it does. MFIT can assess VM-based applications and determine both what a suitable target for the application is, as well as any work that might need to be done in order to migrate that application. Essentially, we give a score that indicates the likelihood of success and the effort involved in it. Because we know customers have hundreds and sometimes thousands of applications they want to assess, MFIT integrates with VMware vSphere, it can examine a given vSphere server, figure out what workloads are on the system at the VM level, for instance, what OS is running, how much RAM is installed, etc. This helps give a first pass at determining which VMs might be a suitable candidate for migration. For a more granular look, MFIT can collect data from inside the VM to give a report on what services and applications are actually running. Armed with this information, you can begin to put together a plan on which applications to migrate. 
For the actual migration step, we have a host of different migration tooling. For compute, we have Migrate for Compute Engine, as well as Migrate to Containers. And for databases, we have Database Migration Services. You can learn more about those products via a bunch of different videos here on YouTube, as well as the documentation, which we'll link in the description. That's about all the time we have today. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out those other videos, as well as the documentation I mentioned to learn about how Google Cloud can help ease your move to the cloud. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe so you'll be notified whenever we publish new content.